Eric Braden was born in the midst of World War II and survived the deadliest shipwreck in German naval history. If you only know him from The Young and the Restless, that's only a small part of his sometimes tragic life story. Eric Braden entered the world as Hans Gudegast April 3, 1941 in Kiel, Germany. Soviet forces were bombarding Germany at the time as Stalin's Red Army was taking on Hitler's Third Reich. During one of World War II's most intense periods, conditions were so dangerous that the hospital where Braden was born had been bombed the day after his mother was discharged. Braden wasn't sure if the timing was luck or serendipity, but the incident planted a seed of fearlessness in the future soap star. Braden shared with TV Insider, I do feel I grew up with a deep-seated belief that I could overcome anything. That was always a part of me. Braden had every reason to be scared during the war, especially living near Kiel where shipbuilding was the major industry and a feeder of vessels to the German Navy. It didn't help that Braden was born to a well-off family in Bradenbeck, where his father was also the mayor, but status wasn't enough to insulate themselves against tragedy. The sights and sounds of conflict were everywhere in his home country. Braden recalled to the Washington Post, I remember images of bomb attacks, the noises of planes approaching, bombs falling, and anti-aircraft shooting back. I remember clinging to whatever adult was close by in shelters. You would come out and find families crying, animals screaming. By 1945, the intensity of the fighting forced the Gudegasts and other locals to flee the country via the ocean liner MV Wilhelm Gustloff. But hours after the ship left port, a Soviet sub torpedoed the Gustloff, killing an estimated 9,400 of the 10,000 people on board in what turned out to be the deadliest single-ship disaster in naval history. The Gudegasts were miraculously among the very few who made it back to Germany alive. The family unfortunately had to endure the remainder of the war, which ended later that spring. Eric Braden mentioned the marine disaster in his 2017 memoir, I'll Be Damned, How My Young and Restless Life Led Me to America's Number One Daytime Drama. But he said his bigger recollections of life during wartime consisted of flashes of fireballs destroying the town, starving citizens digging for potatoes, and those scary moments in the Gudegast basement during air raids, he wrote. As a little boy with nothing to compare them to, I wonder if I thought those horrors were normal, that they were part of what everyday life was like in this world. Eric Braden recalled the pain and bewilderment of losing his father to a heart attack. He wrote in his memoir, I'll Be Damned, It was an overwhelming number of changes for a 12-year-old to process, especially one who was still mourning the loss of the most important person in his life with no clue how to make sense of it. The tragedy not only changed Braden's demeanor, but it also became a tool that helped him navigate his way through the power-tripping egos of Hollywood. Braden said losing his father at a young age made him resentful of imposed authority. He revealed on the podcast State of Mind with Maurice Bernard, I will not take shit from anyone, and that has served me well over the years. Braden blamed the war, the humiliation from being arrested, and his father's loss of business as being the triggers for the cardiac arrest that killed him. But he was also appalled to discover why his father was arrested in the first place. At the end of World War II, a British officer arrested his father for his association with the Nazi party, which the bewildered four-year-old Braden didn't know at the time. Braden explained to people regarding his father, He was not a part of the atrocities. In fact, I found out my eldest brother was approached by the Hitler Youth, and my father forbade him to join. The war and eventual incarceration also disrupted his father's construction business, and the household quickly felt the pinch. Braden wrote in his memoir, Within a few weeks, we didn't just see the end of our life of privilege, we plunged into utter poverty. The Nazis had confiscated most of my father's trucks during the war. What trucks they didn't confiscate, the British did, when the war ended and they took over. The Gudegasts wound up living in a small upstairs section of the home they once owned. Despite the hardship, Braden not only learned valuable lessons, but he was also forced to grow up in a hurry. Still known in Hollywood as Hans Gudegast, Eric Braden's opportunities were scarce at the time due to his name. His German-associated name meant his background shut him out of more diverse opportunities. According to his former Young and the Restless co-star Doug Davidson, Braden was considered to play James Bond in the movie On Her Majesty's Secret Service, a role George Lazenby eventually landed. Davidson revealed in a tweet that Eric was disqualified from playing the role because he didn't have a British passport. Braden's big chance came in 1970 when he was tapped to play the lead as a scientist in the movie Colossus, The Forbin Project. The only problem was that he had to change his name. Braden didn't want to change his name until his wife, Dale Russell, reminded him that legendary German actors like Maximilian Schell had to settle for only playing Nazis in war films. 
He told CBS, Changing my name was one of the most painful decisions I've ever made, so I needed to choose a name that I could still identify with. He came up with Eric, a rather common name in Northern Europe, and opted for the last name Braden after his hometown of Bradenbeck. It worked, as his role in the film Colossus quickly opened a lot of doors, Braden told Archive of American Television. When you suddenly star in a film, things change very quickly. It's an uncanny feeling, a very disconcerting feeling, a very unbalancing feeling. After Colossus, Eric Braden managed to get more eclectic roles on TV, in shows like Charlie's Angels and Kojak, as well as movies like Escape from the Planet of the Apes. His star took another upturn in 1980 when he accepted a gig to play Victor Newman in The Young and the Restless, whose personality was every bit as brash as the actor portraying him. Braden said in an interview about the show, I said, what is that? Well, that's a daytime drama on, on television. They have television during the day. Oh yeah, I didn't know. It was that attitude which got him into frequent trouble on the set. In 1991, Braden allegedly got into an altercation with Peter Bergman, who played Jack Abbott, Newman's rival. While he had a lot of respect for Bergman, Braden said the two actors had different styles of approaching the material. He told Soap Opera Digest, "...there was a time when I said to Peter, look, we may not like each other, but we are both good for the show. This storyline that you and I have, this enmity between us, is good for the show. It makes for drama and conflict." He had another altercation with an actor who tried to get Braden fired, but the actor in question eventually got himself canned. Braden told TV Insider, "...he was a very good actor, but he's lucky he's walking in one piece." Braden himself walked off The Young and the Restless in 2009 for refusing to take a pay cut. He told CNN, "...this is a certain corporate culture now that is very deleterious." In January 2010, he returned after making a few compromises in his contract. Like most veteran actors on the soap circuit, Eric Braden has seen several colleagues come and go, sometimes due to the saddest of circumstances. One loss that emotionally shook the actor was the 2013 death of Gene Cooper, who played corporate matriarch Catherine Chancellor. Upon Cooper's passing, Braden, in a prepared statement to Soap Opera Network, said, "...she was an absolute joy to work with. We never did a scene without having laughs. After a painful struggle, she has finally found peace. I will miss working with her a lot." In 2019, Braden was crushed by the death of another Y&R actor. Christoph St. John died from heart disease just five years following his son's death by suicide. Visibly weary with grief, Braden talked to Extra about the shocking news. He said of St. John, "...he's a man's man. A damn good actor. Loved everyone. Everyone loved him." Braden went on to say that St. John was one of the most charming and gregarious actors they ever had on The Young and the Restless. Throughout his life, Eric Braden has survived everything from bullets and bombs to the most tragic shipwreck in history. But another test of his mortality surfaced in 2023, when he revealed that he has bladder cancer. He said in a Facebook video, "...I hate to be this personal, but I think this may be good for some older guys who may or may not listen to this. It'll happen to them." His health issues started shortly after a knee replacement when he began to notice problems with his prostate gland, starting with frequent needs to urinate. Braden is now recovering after surgery that removed low-grade and high-grade cancer cells. He reassured his fans, "...I'll be in top form soon, so I'm still happy to be able to work that I enjoy. It distracts me. I love acting. I love knowing that I entertain people, and I love your support." At 82, Braden's prognosis is good, especially given his years of athletics. Statistics taken from the American Cancer Association's 2023 findings suggested the five-year relative survival rate for bladder cancer in the United States is 77 percent, and the death rate has been decreasing steadily by 2 percent since 2016.